let's look at local basketball. Uh, uh, Cleveland State's really struggling. And, and I don't need my readers to see <laughs> that they are winless yeah. in the conference. Yeah, 0 and 6. I don't know how that happens, and I say it this way. I think there was a lot more of an expectation mm -hmm. you know, with the team this year, and we know Northern Kentucky right. is the darling of the conference, yeah, that, and they're going to, to win the conference, yeah. regular season and tournament. But uh, it has to be disappointing, uh, the, at least the start that Cleveland State Yeah, has. I think, I think uh, after what they did at the end of last year, going to the uh, uh, Horizon League Tournament Championship, uh, even though, I mean, even with doing that, they still won only one a dozen games. So uh, you kind of got to put that in perspective. But I think there was a, a sense that, you know, they got a lot of freshmen and sophomores this year, that those guys would kind of step up uh, to the plate a little bit more than what they've, they've done. Now, the one kid, uh, Appleby, Tyree Appleby, their leading scorer, he's been pretty consistent. Stephen Kinnick. The uh, six nine, six ten uh, uh, kid uh, uh, from Europe. He's kind of been a European player. Only recently has he started to really rebound the basketball. Before before the last two or three games, he was only getting three, four, five, five and, rebounds. And define against. European player to our well, a European, Europe, you know, as as a as a blanket statement. Okay, we're not going to put them all, but as as a generality. European players are considered guys that, that sit around perimeter, shoot, highly skilled, but don't really bang. You know, not really big rebounders. And that kind of fit his profile. Um, he can score. He can shoot three-pointers. Not really a grinder underneath the basket, but is clever enough to score around the basket. But he's just not been the guy to get the big offensive rebound, the big tip in, the big defensive rebound and outlet. So, uh, and conversely, Cleveland State struggled because they don't have any, any inside game whatsoever. Well, so, well, well, let's go to, uh, there's more than Cleveland State. Right. You know, there's Akron. Uh, uh, what's been your impression with Akron so far? Akron, uh, you know, they're, they're a, an evolving team. They got a lot of junior college players and, and, and a couple transfers and whatever. Uh, they haven't quite gelled yet. Uh, their two best players are their two older players, uh, Jamond Ivey from uh, Cleveland Glenville and Daniel Utomi, uh, uh, Jr. from Houston. Ivey's a senior. But around them is still a lot of uh, new faces, certainly new to Akron. Uh, some of them have had uh, uh, D1 experience or junior college experience before that. But as, as a unit, they're still... Uh, uh, still trying to find themselves. They got pieces. They got three or four different post players that they can use. They got a scorer in the post. They got a 6'10", 6'11", rim protector in the post. They got uh, a 6'9", small ball kind of defender. And mm -hmm. they, got, they got pieces that they can put out there. So they're evolving. They're, yeah, that they can put out there to match up with whatever you have. But in terms of them putting it all together, they, they, you know, they're sporadic shooters. One game they'll look great shooting three pointers. The next two or three games they'll look average or worse. That's been an issue. So it's it's like I say, it's an evolving team. They're above 500, which is good, but they're on, they've only won one game in the in the in the MAC so far. So they got they got some work to do. And and lastly, uh, Kent has a big game this week. Kent, uh, got, they, they always have big games. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, they they their issues. They're one and two in the conference. The one game they won, uh, uh, they won convincingly. But the two games they lost, they lost by 15, 20 points. They are not a traditional Kent State team by any means. Ah, explain, explain. Uh, well, they're, <laughs> they are recognized and identified by their inside play. And usually they got a pair and a spare inside. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, now all they got is the spare. Because the two guys that were projected to be there, uh, uh, Donna Stella Rosa, 6'10", 6'11", 7-footer, transferred to uh, Illinois uh, and has only barely played there uh, uh, since he left. The other kid, 6'9", uh, uh, Danny Pippen, the power forward, um, he's opted to, to uh, take the red shirt, you know, while he rehabs from, from a knee injury. Mm -hmm. 
uh, there's speculation that he could play, but, you know, I've seen microfracture surgery guys, you know, some guys can come back fast, some guys don't. So that's, that's the issue there. So the third guy, who would have been the third guy in that mix, Phil Whittington, is their spare, but he's also their number one now because those two guys are gone. And that completely uh, – they got really good guards, don't get me wrong, but because of the style of play that they historically play – uh, and and that they, you know, uh, people identify with Kent basketball. When they come up against teams that are big, they aren't big enough to <laughs> right. to deal not with them. Not big enough. They're not big enough. And the two teams that, that beat them, Bowling Green has 6'11", kid that I think is like second or third in the country in rebounding uh, uh, and, and, and is a double-figure scorer. And then last week they lost to Eastern Michigan. And Eastern Michigan starts 6'10", 6'11", 6'9", on the baseline. It's got 6'9", 6'8", 250 coming off the bench. Kent has nothing like that. Next year, they'll look better. But this year, it's going to be a struggle for them to, to be who that. Even though they've, they're 12 wins, they're, they're only 12 and 4. I mean, I'm not right. saying they're, they're chopped liver. I'm just saying that their margin for error is extremely slim, particularly when they go up against teams that have multiple players with size.